Moraba, welcome. Great to be here, my brother. Thank you so much. Really glad to have you. I really love the phrase, a stroke of genius. You were in Alaska with your family in a hotel one morning. I think you were taking a shower. Yeah. And you had this feeling and this vision that kind of struck you. And you know, whether or not it, it, it has anything at all to do with genius, tell us, tell us about that moment. You know, I'm, I'm in the shower and I felt, uh, I felt a presence. And in my mind's eye, I saw flashes of scenes from like history and how in the beginning, whatever that means, it seems like there was this intergenerational contract of stewardship with the planet, but that humanity over time has mostly abandoned that intergenerational contract of stewardship and has forgotten about how interconnected things are. Did that moment change the life you led and, and the work that you do? And... Ab absolutely. So one of the people that I really look up to is Jane Goodall. I watched uh, something about Jane where she said that she went to a meeting as a scientist and she left that meeting an activist. In very similar ways, I went to Anchorage, kind of just this scientist, and I came back both a scientist and now this space environmentalist activist to really try to, I guess, really showcase how we need to protect orbital space. If there's a kind of genius that means something to you, something that you would want to live up to or something you'd want to recognize in yourself, what would that, what would that kind of genius like actually look like? To me, the best kind of genius is simply allowing myself to let the universe go through me and I guess use me as some sort of vehicle for the work that I'm trying to do. And if I can keep myself kind of in the moment and in a place of compassion and empathy, then I think genius is just what comes through when you allow that to happen. There's more garbage orbiting the Earth than there are working satellites. You now work not just to make sure that all that stuff is properly tracked, but to be an evangelist for expanding the way we think about environmental protection so that it includes all that stuff. What can those of us who are not scientists, what can we do to, to help you? Every day, the technologies that we have are more and more reliant on these robots in the space that we call satellites. And we're tracking about 50,000 things ranging in size from a cell phone to the space station. 5,000 are working and everything else is garbage. So that's like 90% of the stuff is trash. The thing that most people just don't realize is that these satellites that are providing these critical services and, and, and capabilities, position, navigation, timing, communications, uh, you know, internet with the Starlink satellites, right? Any of these things can get schwacked, that's the technical term, get schwacked by a piece of junk, and that's game over, and then you lose that capability. So I think more and more people just need to be aware that, oh, well, that space, that's somebody else's problem. No, it's our problem because our way of life our technology is now going through this infrastructure. There's a real stereotypical idea of genius that I'm thinking of a kind of solitary genius working by herself or himself off, off, off in, a, in a fun cabin, you know? What does it mean, what would it mean to be a, a genius collaborator? Back in the times of like the Renaissance, people looked at folks like you know, Da Vinci, Michelangelo, and they said, okay, these are geniuses in, the, in their own right, right? And people say, well, how can we, how can anybody be like another one of those? Science has developed so much beyond those days that there's no way for somebody to be able to be, quote unquote, this Renaissance person that knows very deeply things in all these different fields. Like, those days are gone, okay? But, to me, the real genius is recognizing where you bring in smart people from other fields that complement and augment your own to solve wicked problems. Yeah, co con connectedness, connections Absolutely. with one another. Yeah. But my understanding, though, from, from reading a little bit of your writing, is that you were, um, I, th I think in your childhood, you, f you felt really isolated. I did, yeah. My mom was born in Haiti, uh, and you know, f she was naturalized citizen. My father, Sierra Leone, naturalized citizen. Um, they got divorced when I was very young. And uh, yeah, it, my, my father was just very abusive. So at the age of seven, uh, he kidnapped me. And nine days later, they found me in some apartment in the Bay Area, put me back on a plane to my mom. 
And my mom had, uh, well, we had a cousin that lived in Caracas, and so we fled the country because my mom's like, you know, I don't want your father to ever find you again. He never uh, did physically again. But growing up in Venezuela, I felt very isolated. I felt very alone. I came into contact in this void with what seemed to feel like an ocean of infinite love and compassion. And then I realized, oh, I have a choice here. I can choose to meet my experiences with equal anger, or I can choose to act from a place of love and compassion and heal, heal from my pain and make my healing be of service to others. And that's what I've chosen to do. When the MacArthur Foundation, when they named you a fellow, they said it was because, they used a beautiful phrase, it's because you envision transparent and collaborative solutions for the Earth's orbital spheres. What are those solutions? And, and maybe when, when are they coming? My inspiration for this comes from uh, indigenous people, from traditional ecological knowledge, TEK, I call it ancient tech. And so for me, my, my, the vision of my future is seeing Western science and traditional ecological knowledge come together, not annihilate each other, but actually harmonize uh, with each other so that then that could be the way of the future so that humanity does recognize interconnectedness, empathy, and stewardship. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your story, sharing yourself. Thank you, brother. Truly enjoyed it. Thank you. Watch the Business Week show Thursday nights, 10.30 Eastern on Bloomberg Television or 8.30 on Bloomberg.com or the Bloomberg app on connected TVs.